Welcome to my channel, American Canadian Time. Subscribe to my channel for news updates all around the world. Canada's ambitious plan to acquire 88 F-35A fighter jets intended to modernize its aging air force is now facing a wave of intense scrutiny and uncertainty. What was once seen as a straightforward upgrade has become a lightning rod for controversy, as new questions emerge about the program's cost, strategic value, and long-term implications for Canadian sovereignty. The projected cost of the F-35 program has ballooned dramatically, rising from an initial estimate of $19 billion to nearly $28 billion. This staggering increase has triggered a wave of public concern and political backlash, with critics questioning whether such a massive investment is justified at a time when Canadians are facing economic pressures at home. The debate has spilled into Parliament, where heated discussions about military priorities and fiscal responsibility dominate the headlines, while the government has already committed to purchasing the first 16 jets. The remainder of the order is now on hold. Officials are taking a step back, reassessing whether the F-35 is truly the best fit for Canada's defense needs. This pause reflects not only financial concerns but also a desire to ensure that the country's air force is equipped for the challenges of the future. Beyond the soaring price tag, there are growing worries about Canada's reliance on U.S. supply chains and proprietary software. In a crisis, this dependence could limit Canada's ability to operate its own fleet independently, raising questions about national security and operational autonomy. Some experts warn that this could leave Canada vulnerable if diplomatic relations with the U.S. ever become strained. The government's decision to pause the F-35 order has reignited competition among global defense contractors. European and other international manufacturers are now vying for a chance to supply Canada's next-generation fighter, each promising better value, advanced technology, and greater independence from U.S. oversight. The stakes are high, as this is one of the largest military procurement contracts in Canadian history. At the heart of the debate is a fundamental question. Should Canada commit to a single U.S.-made stealth fleet or explore a more diverse approach that could offer better value and increased sovereignty? Military analysts, pilots, and policymakers are weighing the pros and cons, considering not just the technical capabilities of each aircraft, but also the broader implications for Canada's defense strategy and industrial base. As the government's review drags on and speculation mounts, the F-35 debate has become a symbol of Canada's larger struggle to balance its defense needs, economic realities, and its complex relationship with the United States. The outcome will shape not only the future of the Air Force, but also the country's approach to sovereignty, industrial policy, and international alliances for years to come. As Canada stands at this critical crossroads, the decision over its next fighter jet fleet will have lasting consequences. The future of the Royal Canadian Air Force and the nation's autonomy on the world stage hangs in the balance. Sensing opportunity, Swedish defense giant Saab is making a bold play to sell its Gripen E-Fighter to Canada. Saab's CEO and even Swedish royalty are leading a high-profile campaign, framing the Gripen as not just an alternative, but the smarter, more sovereign choice. The Gripen is pitched as ideal for Canada's vast, harsh terrain, able to operate from short runways and at a fraction of the F-35's cost. Saab's message, this isn't just a jet, it's a partnership, one that promises jobs, technology, and a new era of industrial collaboration. With the political landscape shifting, Saab is pulling out all the stops to ensure the Gripen gets a second look. The fight for Canada's fighter future is heating up, and Saab is determined to win. At the heart of Saab's offer is a game-changing partnership with Bombardier. Saab proposes building Gripen parts, and even assembling the jets, right in Canada, making it only the third country with such a facility. This would mean thousands of high-tech jobs and a major boost for Canadian industry. The partnership extends to Saab's globalized surveillance aircraft already based on Bombardier jets, showing a proven track record. Unlike the F-35's global supply chain, Saab's plan gives Canada real leadership and control over production. The Made in Canada Gripen is a powerful narrative, one that directly addresses concerns about sovereignty and economic benefit. For Ottawa, it's a tempting vision. Advanced fighters, built at home, fueling a national aerospace revival. Rolls-Royce's deep roots in Canada add a new twist to the Gripen debate. 
While not powering the Gripen, Rolls-Royce's success as a foreign aerospace giant thriving in Canada is a model for what Saab promises. Their presence proves that international defense partnerships can deliver jobs, innovation, and economic sovereignty. Saab points to Rolls-Royce as proof that a European-led project can work and even supercharge the entire Canadian aerospace sector. A Gripen assembly line would ripple across the industry, benefiting suppliers like Rolls-Royce and beyond. The real question, does Canada want to be a cog in a US supply chain, or a leader in its own right? The Rolls-Royce example makes Saab's offer more than a sales pitch. It's a blueprint for national renewal. The F-35A and Gripen E represent two radically different visions for Canada's Air Force, each offering a unique approach to modern aerial warfare and national defense. As Canada faces a pivotal decision about its next-generation fighter, the stakes are high, not just for military capability, but for sovereignty, industry, and the future of Canadian aviation. The F-35 is a stealthy, data-fusing powerhouse, designed for deep strikes, electronic warfare, and seamless integration with US and NATO allies. Its advanced sensors and network systems allow pilots to see and strike first, making it a formidable force in contested airspace. The F-35's ability to share real-time data across allied forces is a game-changer for joint operations and coalition warfare, but this cutting-edge technology comes with a steep price tag both in terms of acquisition and ongoing maintenance. The F-35 program also means long-term dependence on American support for software updates, spare parts, and mission data, potentially limiting Canada's operational independence. The Gripen E, while less stealthy, is rugged, affordable and designed for rapid turnaround even from highways and remote airstrips. Its robust design allows for quick repairs and operations in harsh environments, making it ideal for Canada's vast and challenging geography. Its open software architecture and low operating costs mean more flying hours, easier upgrades, and the ability to tailor the jet to Canadian needs, all under Canadian control. The Gripen's flexibility empowers Canada to adapt quickly to new threats and technologies, without waiting for foreign approval. For the same budget, Canada could operate a larger fleet of Gripens, invest more in pilot training, and keep more money circulating within the Canadian economy. This could mean more jobs, more expertise, and a stronger, domestic aerospace industry. The F-35's edge is in stealth, advanced sensors, and networked warfare, the Gripen's strengths are adaptability, cost-effectiveness, and national independence. Each jet brings distinct advantages, but also unique trade-offs. The real choice for Canada is not just about which jet is more advanced on paper, but which aircraft's strengths best fit Canada's defense needs, strategic priorities, and vision for the future. Ultimately, it's not just about technology, it's about what kind of air force and what kind of country Canada wants to be in the decades ahead. The Gripen's global momentum is reshaping the debate. Ukraine's intent to buy up to 150 Gripens could double Saab's production, making a Canadian assembly line even more strategic. Other countries, like Thailand and Colombia, are also lining up, drawn by the Gripen's blend of capability and affordability. A Canadian-built Gripen wouldn't just serve Canada, it could anchor Saab's North American supply chain and export hub. Each new order strengthens the Gripen ecosystem, challenging the idea that only the F-35 offers true allied interoperability. Canada would join a growing club of Gripen operators worldwide. The Gripen's international surge is a powerful endorsement of its design and a chance for Canada to lead, not follow. The mixed fleet idea, some F-35s, mostly Gripens, is sparking fierce debate. Supporters say it offers stealth and sovereignty, jobs and savings, but military leaders warn it would double training, logistics, and costs, lessons painfully learned in Canada's past. The Air Force argues, a single fleet is essential for readiness and efficiency, especially with current shortages of pilots and technicians. The mixed fleet is politically tempting, but operationally risky. The debate pits industrial ambition against military reality. There's no easy answer, only tough trade-offs for Canada's future. The Gripen E is quietly becoming a digital powerhouse, setting new standards for what a modern fighter jet can achieve. At first glance, it may look like just another advanced aircraft, but beneath the surface, it's a marvel of software-driven innovation and next-generation technology. Saab's partnership with Helsing has put artificial intelligence like the Centaur agent directly into the cockpit, 
giving pilots a digital co-pilot that can analyze threats, prioritize targets, and recommend actions in real time. This means pilots are no longer alone in the sky. They have a powerful AI assistant that helps them make split-second decisions even in the most complex combat scenarios. The Gripen's open architecture software is a game-changer for countries like Canada. It allows for independent upgrades and customization so Canadian engineers can adapt the jet systems to meet evolving threats without waiting for foreign approval or being locked into a single supplier's ecosystem. This flexibility ensures the Gripen can stay ahead of adversaries for years to come. AI integration isn't just a gimmick, it's fundamentally reshaping how pilots operate in the air. Digital wingmen can handle complex tasks like electronic warfare, threat detection, and mission planning, freeing up the pilot to focus on critical decisions and tactics. This human-machine collaboration is transforming the very nature of air combat. This concept of human-machine teaming is rapidly becoming the future of air combat, and the Gripen is already at the forefront, testing these capabilities in real-world scenarios. Pilots are learning to trust and rely on their digital partners, making the entire force more agile and effective. Unlike the F-35's fixed stealth approach, the Gripen's true edge lies in its adaptability. Its modular software, advanced sensors, and evolving AI systems can be upgraded over decades, ensuring the jet remains relevant as technology and threats change. This future-proof design philosophy is what sets the Gripen apart. For Canada, this means more than just a new fighter jet. It means having a platform that can be tailored to Canadian needs, operated on Canadian terms, and kept at the cutting edge by Canadian hands, no compromises, no dependencies. The Gripen isn't just ready for today's missions, it's engineered to meet the unpredictable challenges of tomorrow, making it a true leap forward in air combat technology. Canada's fighter choice will shape its air force, industry and sovereignty for generations. The F-35 means deep U.S. integration, but also dependence. The Gripen, especially with Bombardier, offers jobs, economic revival, and true control over Canada's defense. The decision is about more than jets. It's about national identity, autonomy, and the future of Canadian aerospace. Will Canada double down on U.S. ties, or chart a more independent path? The outcome will define Canada's role in the world, and its ability to defend itself on its own terms. The future of Canadian sovereignty is, quite literally, in the skies.